No. <laughs> Please don't kill us. Holy crap. <laughs> that was freaking epic. Looking back over the last few years, the videos I've shared with you have all been different from one another. Sometimes I'm chasing wild cattle in the desert, packing out elk in the mountains, saving cattle from blizzards, exploring places I've never been, and so much more. Although these videos are different from one another, there's one thing that's almost always the same. I'm on the back of a mule I call Old Red. Old Red made her first appearance on Bronx and Donks back in 2020, and let's just say that she was far from perfect. Oh! Tristan's on Old Red Dead Redemption there. We should have warmed him up a little more. But I saw potential in her, and I had a feeling that one day, she would become my top mount. By the time 2021 rolled around, it was rare that I left her at home. She went everywhere with me. Tyler's up there, I don't know if you can see him or not, but he came from those cliffs up there. He's always in four-wheel drive. And Old Red's four-wheel drive was about the only way I could find elk sheds. Jeez. Let's go! She also came in handy when I was looking for cattle in the back country, and we usually found ourselves riding in some sketchy places. Yeah! Just for reference, Fine. that cliff is as tall as my horse is. <laughs> I always felt safe on Old Red, especially on the slick rock. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. I'll tell you what's going on. This horse is not like your mule. Yeah, same. This horse let's, is let's do this for science. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the cattle we gathered were even more sketchy than the trails, but Old Red didn't care. Whew. She's on the fight, boy. <laughs> and we punched a lot of cattle that summer. <laughs> <laughs> when your horse gets tired, ride a bull. Ride a bull, save a cowboy. Or a horse. <laughs> it's starting to come down now, boys. You've heard of foot pressure. How about hat pressure? <laughs> it's snowing. It is. It is snowing. Over the year, I got a lot of work done with the help of Old Red, but it wouldn't be until 2022 that I would depend on her. Dude, we're surrounded by elk. They're just going crazy. It's awesome water. It's like 6.50. Yeah, we got Mountain Dew. By now, Old Red is my best mule. So that means she has a lot of responsibility, especially on hunting trips. All right, got the pack mule. Gonna load her up with all this gear right here. We don't want any rodeos today because we got an expensive drone in there. A nice spotting scope, all of our gear. But she'll do good for us. Won't you, Red? Packing our gear is only a small <laughs> part of the job because when we get an elk, Dude. holy cow! She's the one who packs it out. Two, three. Hey, man, you've tied some hills before. <laughs> Red, you're doing good. We got our pack loaded up, meat in the back of old Red, horns on old Buck. Let's get out of here, huh? Having a good pack mule around could be the difference between having a good trip and a bad trip. And trust me, I know the difference. Watch see if she drops anything else. As you can see by the pack saddle in the stream, we didn't find ourselves in a great situation. I hope our tent poles are not bent. If so, it's gonna be a long night in the snow. Both of those wrecks happened on the same trip, but I didn't have to worry about my gear getting wet because it was on the back of Old Red. As for the other guys, they weren't as lucky. What are you doing? Just heating my feet up. Just, they're getting dried up. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're standing in the fire, bro. Dude. <laughs> My feet will get dry now. <laughs> That's a first. That trip ended up being a ton of fun. And Old Red packed out a buck, some sheds, and a bunch of other things for us. Look at that majestic beast. Over the years, she's packed out over 12 bull elk for me. And those are just the ones I can remember. I think part of the reason I was invited along on so many hunting trips was because of Old Red. And I have countless memories with her on the trail. Oh man, how cool is that? That is awesome. First moose paddle I've ever found. But Holy the biggest crap. adventure Old Red and I would ever go on was later that year. And that's when she would change my life. The Utah border, the northern Utah border is right there at that sign. We've got 10 mules up here and we're ready to ride clear to the bottom border of Utah, boys. 30 days, 600 miles, let's go! Well, I'm pretty sure I can see Idaho for one last time, clear off in the distance. So long, Idaho. It's hard to explain what I felt at the beginning of this trip because there was a lot going through my mind. It's finally starting to set in a little bit that we're really doing this. I'm crazy. There are over 600 consecutive miles between us and the finish line, and each mile will be different from the last. At first, I felt excited because of the freedom. Let's go! 20 miles down, baby! <laughs> we made it to the water hole. These guys are thirsty. And who wouldn't be excited for the good times to come? Holy crap! Where are you going? Oh my gosh! Are you serious? Freaking meals are crazy! No more snow, baby! To the border! Let's go! Yay! Wild stuff. But along with the freedom came a tremendous amount of responsibility. Um, I need to figure out where Eli's gonna meet us tomorrow. Two, and then three to the lake, and then four to Colville. And it was easy for stress to creep into the back of my mind because if my maps and plans were bad, then we wouldn't have enough time to cross over the mountains. Pretty much as far as you can see, that's where we're riding. The next few days, we've got a lot of country to cover. The upcoming winter storms would make the mountains impossible to cross, so we were in a race with Mother Nature. It's coming down now. Any wrong turns or any problems that popped up could delay us, and there would inevitably be problems that would come up. So uh, last night was kind of disappointing. Old Janet, the, the bay mule, she broke out of her hobbles and took off running, and Hammer, one of the other mules took off with her and they just disappeared. On top of staying on schedule, I had uneasy feelings about the trail ahead because we would be riding through some wild country. We're a little paranoid about, we're a little paranoid about quicksand still. This could get hairy boys. We're racing in the dark. <laughs> she go for the <laughs> hills. Okay, we just hit the river. We've got another 20 miles to go tonight. Good thing we don't have anywhere to be. Because we're not going to get there. <laughs> Holy sh I'm really sinking. Don't give up boys, don't give up. We have officially left Idaho. We're about 200 yards away from the border, so only 600 miles to go. Got a long road ahead of us. Like I said before, it's hard to explain what I felt at the start of this trip. I was both excited and stressed out with a hint of uneasiness about the trail ahead. But ultimately, what I felt most at this moment was confidence. I was ready to face those challenges and I felt confident because 
I would have old Red to rely on when things got tough. Rain or shine, she'd be there for me. And when I tell you I've never had a better mule, I mean it.